morning good morning good morning it is 4 56 a.m eastern standard time saturday february the 13th 2021 we're about to watch three weigh-ins live i am going to do some jump cuts we're here live real time right now saturday morning the first weigh-in for the first card we're going to watch and talk about what's next josh warrington versus a mauricio laura it is taking place on the zone here let me pull up the card real quick Josh Warrington, no longer IBF 126 pound champion. He was ordered to fight Barry Galahad in a rematch, but didn't want to fight him again. Now I'm fighting Mauricio Lara. Now, a name that's been circulating around has been Gary Russell Jr. I don't think Warrington Gary Russell Jr. is going to happen. And now that that IBF title is vacant, will Josh Warrington be moving up in weight? See, we're going to listen to his post-fight interview. By the way, this is Kiko Martinez, who is um, co-featuring on the card, looking in phenomenal shape, by the way. Has he ever looked this good? Against Zelfa Barrett. Matchroom prospect. Fringe contender. This is for the IBF International. Intercontinental title. My bad. My bad. I might, I might do a video on this fight. I don't think I will. I'm sorry. I probably won't. I probably won't. So what's the deal? Somebody let me know down in the comments. By the way, we're going to listen to Josh Warrington's um, post weigh in interview. Like, what, what's the path? Like, which path is he going? Is he moving up in weight? Yeah, the main event is going to be up next. This fight's still at 126. You know, can he hang with the big dogs at 130? I don't know about that, guys. I don't know about that. Here, let's fast forward. And also, I'm going to let you listen to um, his post weigh-in interview. Let's turn it up. Please subscribe. Take your time out. Like the video. Um, the next weigh-in we're going to do is we're going to save Jojo Diaz for last since he missed weight. The next weigh-in we're going to do is going to be for Richard Comey, Jackson Marinez, and then Teixeira Castaño. And we're going to talk about all of these fights. And then um, the last one, Jojo Diaz versus Shuck, uh, Rock, Rock him off. Coming by way of knockout. Presentando de San Felipe de Jesus, Ciudad de Mexico. Please welcome Mauricio Bronco Lara. Lara. No relation to ears on me, Lara. No relation. They trying to get me copyrighted with that music I see. 125, bang on for Mauricio Lara. 125, bang on. Nope, 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 nope. You miss me with the bullshit, see? See, that, that's, that's a pet peeve of mine. Like, don't play copyrighted music for, you know, if you're putting on a way, you know, a press conference, think about the people in the crowd, the YouTubers and shit, you know? Once that copyright music hit, we be done. Top rank and other promotions seem to get it. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His professional record, a perfect one. 30 fights, 30 victories. Seven of them coming by way of knockout. He is fight. the first and only world boxing champion fighting out of and proudly representing his home of Leeds in the United Kingdom. Please welcome the former IBF featherweight champion of the world, Josh, the Leeds Warrior, Warrington. How y'all feel about this fight? Warrington. God, God damn it, Diamante. Well, hey, well, he's used to the big crowds. Didn't get the response he yeah. wanted there. I think that's just a sign of the times more than anything else. We're all a bit fatigued. What that lockdown, lockdown fatigue. But Yay. <laughs> Josh Warrington looking in great shape as ever. Went to see him. Uh, 125 and one half pounds for Josh, the Leeds Warrior, Warrington. Double crossed up, huh? Awesome. Like that. Okay. Awesome Crazy. to be around Crazy. Josh Warrington and what a journey he's been on, having to relinquish that title. But so yeah, like you know, is this is, this this is just a pandemic fight, right? This fight really don't mean nothing. This is just to keep Josh Warrington active. Is this is what this shit is. Got a nice little resume, though, with Lee Selby, Carl Frampton, and Barry Galahad. And Kiko Martinez, when he had him, even though he's on his card, he was on his last legs. And he had Patrick Hyland. Hasashi Yamagasa. I think this is the dude that Rigondeaux starfished. Or was this the dude that um, uh, Donaire knocked out? Who you fight? Your name's him. Yeah. 
Didn't Rigandow starfish this? No, this is the dude who Rigandow broke his eye, right? That the dude? And dude was like, oh, no, he broke his jaw. And dude was like, oh, oh, oh. Like he was walking around the ring at the end of the fight, like, oh, shit. Oh, that. Anyway, let's go listen to his um interview over on Sky and see what is next. Oh, my man, is this guy? There we are. Oh, we can't play Sky <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, probably more focused. Well, he's taking this experience well, hasn't he, Lara? He's up for this. Josh, you can take your mask off for this one. Um, how do you feel? You've just uh, weighed in there. We thought that uh, you'd be full of emotion and charged up. There's no fans to roll back at you though today. In my head, there is. I'm in Leeds uh, Town Hall. Well, I'm in Leeds City Museum and there's thousands here. In my head, there is. Listen, mentally, I'm really, really focused. Um, probably more focused than I was yesterday. You know, I think coming away from the press conference yesterday, just reminding myself that, you know, that I've got a fight right here. This guy boxed four times last year. He's 22, I'm 30. You know, he's got no pressure whatsoever. And the name El Bronco, I don't know what it translates to. Scary, he's scary. You know, and he's beaten a lot of people with, uh, with winning records and I, I didn't state that too much yesterday. He's got power, he's got like 50, over 50% 50 knockout ratio. It's better than mine. I've only got seven KOs in 30 fights, so listen, I've got my hands full, but. My bad, I was saying, my bad, I'm sorry, it was muted, it was muted, my bad, my bad, my bad is early. I was saying, you know, I can understand everything he's saying. I'm very fluent in Scouser, that's, that's, that's Liverpool, but what's it called when they're from Leeds? What's that shit called? So I understand everything he was saying. So basically, he's pretty much bigging up or giving praise to Mauricio Lara selling the fight, meaning um, um, Josh Warrington. And his alias is the Bronco, meaning Mauricio, I mean, Mauricio Bronco, La Bronco, El Bronco, Laura. So he like, I don't even know what Bronco mean. Well, if you don't know what Bronco means, then look, I'm going to tell you right now. A Bronco is a wild or half-tamed horse of the Western U.S. See what you look like. You look strong, dude. But also, remember the Ford Bronco, the OJ Bronco. Watch this shit. So you think he's saying some sinister shit? You think it means some sinister shit? Hmm? El Bronco? So, all right, we're running back because we got to move on to the next way in. So anyway, listen in. Because I want to know what's next for him. If he, Josh, you if take he your wins. mask off for this one. If he wins, because he seems to be highly respectful, and, and he was like this at the press conference. I, I watched the press conference even though I didn't stream it. He was highly respectful at the press conference, too. And it'd be fighters like this that just come out of nowhere, bro. Like a Navarrete and just beat the shit out you and just, you know. And he's only 22. 21 and 2 with 14 KOs. I mean, I, hey, let's, we gonna see. You know, we gonna see. No contest. What was this? No commission was present. This was that guy. I've heard of this guy. I probably watched this fight. Well, I've definitely heard about it. I'm looking for names that I don't want. I don't know none of these motherfuckers, man. I don't know none of these motherfuckers on here. I probably, all right, all right. Well, anyway, moving on. We're short on time. Short on time. One, um, how do you feel? You've just uh, weighed in there. We thought that uh, you'd be full of emotion and charged up. There's no fans to roll back at you though today. In my head, there is. I'm in Leeds uh, Town Hall. Well, I'm in Leeds City Museum and there's thousands here. In my head, there is. Listen, mentally, I'm really, really focused. Um, probably more focused than I was yesterday. You know, I think coming away from the press conference yesterday, just reminding myself that, you know, that I've got a fight right here. This guy boxed four times last year. He's 22. I'm 30. You know, he's got no pressure whatsoever. And the name El Bronco, I don't know what it translates to. Scary. He's scary. You know, and he's beaten a lot of people with, uh, with winning records, and I, I didn't state that too much yesterday. He's got power, he's got like 50, over 50% 50 knockout ratio. It's better than mine. I've only got seven KOs in 30 fights, so listen, I've got my hands full. But I'm ranked number one in the world, and you don't get ranked number one in the world for turning up in presses and fantasy suits, or in thousands of fans there. You get there by fighting and beating the best. 
got to continue that on Saturday. I saw some quotes from you, um, I love them, that uh, you saw a picture of Cristiano Ronaldo, and you're like, that's what a professional does, that's what I aspire to be. The shape of you there, I mean, we weren't expecting anything different, but it just shows how serious you are still taking this, even behind closed doors in the lockdown. What, I'm, what I lack in talent, I make up for hard work, dedication. I mean, it gets plastered all over social media. People listen to Floyd Melvin chanting it, but that is me. I live the life, and it's a small window. I've read autobiographies of many, many boxers, and I don't want to live with regret. I want to keep on trying to be the best that I can be. And right now, I'm in the pinnacle. I, mean, I could make history be in history books. I already have done, but even more so. I want to be the very best Josh Warrington that I can be, so when I retire, I have no regrets. So if that means 365, 24-7, I'll do it and I'll live the life. You have Leeds tattooed on your body. You're proud of where you're from and the, where you're from is very, very proud of you. You've made a special tribute uh, on Saturday with what you're going to have on your shorts. Just want to expand on that and, and um, tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so last year when I had time back with Eddie and Sky, um, you know, with the talks of the, the big fight with Kanju at Edingley Stadium, we had a press conference down there, load of excitement. There was a gala dinner because um, Rob Burrow's condition had been made uh, to the public. And uh, we, we went down, um, we auctioned off a bell, it raised a fair bit of money there. And I, and I got a chance to have a little word with Rob. And uh, it seemed fitting at the time, you know, if we were fighting at Edingley, Rob, would you do me the honour of walking me to the ring? And he said, you know, he, he said he would do. And he was more able, you know, speaking uh, fairly pretty well uh, then. Um, obviously, a couple of factors have come in. His conditions got a little worse. Um, and obviously, we're fighting behind closed doors and he can't be here. You could tell so he hurt by that. He's there in spirit with us. I've got him on my shorts. And uh, normally, I do have a Leeds legend walking me to the ring. Whether it be football, rugby, you can play bloody tiddlywinks. If they represent the city and they follow me, then, then I'm behind them all the way. So it's just a little recognition of, of the main man there. Did you want to address him directly? We'll get this clipped up on our Twitter and, and get it to him and tag him in it. Yeah, listen, Rob, you're a massive inspiration and uh, you keep fighting, my mate. You keep st uh, staying strong because already you've proved that uh, it doesn't come down to you know natural abilities or, or natural, uh, what, what's the word? You've made the best what you can do with your, with your skill set and uh, determination. And I, I see that and I'm inspired by it. And the fighting, you inspire everyone in the city so, and in the country. Stay strong, my mate. Yeah, everybody echoes those words. Just one more before I let you go. The lights come down, it's just you and Maurizio, Lara. What's the ideal scenario tomorrow? Listen, first and foremost, Josh Wellington win. All, all I need to do, I'm anxious about it because I realise how important this fight is. I need to win. All the talk of the, the unification, the big fights goes out the window if I don't win. So a win is a main thing. But if an early night comes, Andy, I'll take it. Unify I'll what? Take it. Go well. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I'd bring in Adam Smith. I mean, that almost. All right, we are short on time. I was trying to give like each way in like seven minutes, you know, so I can talk about, we can watch the way in, that I can talk about what's next for the fighters, won or loss. Um, like I said, it's a big question mark around Mauricio uh, Lara. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, bef I'm going to go, well, I know I've seen a damn. I've had a little bit of a bad week. So this is like my season premiere week, you know, so I'm getting back in the real, real swing of things. You know, I'm here like full time now. Like I'm really, 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 really back. So normally I haven't watched enough tape this weekend, this week. I usually like get my little tape, you know, I'll sit back and just while I'm here, cause I got multiple screens. So I'll be doing some shit on one screen and I have tape playing on one, Twitter on one and maybe some other shit, you know, but anyway, let's get back to it. So I'm going to be doing a post fight video on this fight because who's next? There's no uni unifying you dry. He dropped his belt. So. You know, who's next? Is he moving to 130? Uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. Because if I talk about if he's moving to 130, it's a lot of possibilities up there. Minus Tank Davis. Long story. Not a long story, but if you follow the boxing po politics. But it's like he's talking about Gary Russell. You know, maybe he's still going to go after Kanju. Maybe they're waiting for Leo Santa Cruz to... Is Leo Santa Cruz going to vacate his 126-pound title? And Kanju be elevated? Did Josh Wunsch go after Kanju? Navarrete just got to the division. So we're going to take a little bit of a jump cut. We got to move on to the next way. And I didn't mean to spend this long on his way in, but hell, fuck it. You know, what, you know, just what we do. We love it. 
Tishree Controversy with FightView360.com. Here's a little bit of a jump cut. For him. I okay, real quick. I'm going to put the link to this down below in the description box. So I haven't seen none of this yet. So I'm up early. I kind of wanted this video to be under 30 minutes. But it might be a little bit longer. I'm watching this right here. I've been talking about which one left right up. I've been talking about how like top ranked digital team has gotten so much better over the years. They got something called real time that they do for all of their fights, their 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 cards. And basically what this is, is Joe Smith. They was, you know, following Joe Smith around through fight week and, and Maxim Vosloff, you know, getting there, you know, documentary um, shoulder content, digital content for YouTube and Twitter and everything. So they put up a video. Joe Smith finds out world title fight is postponed. Now it starts off with him talking to Fury. And I only got here first. And I'm thinking like, damn, he probably going to be hurt when he get the news. So this is Andre Rosier right here. Um, Havoc, he's making the shorts and putting the logos and everything. Like the man does a lot of shit. Um, on, and also, isn't he in line with MTK too? Um, on like the, you know, the trunks and everything. So he's about to, they're making his stuff. So he's about to find out. But anyway, we're going to do another jump cut. I will be right back. I'm going to finish watching this, and then we're going to start off with the weigh-in for uh, Richard Comey versus Mirinez and what is next for the winner and loser, possibly. Uh, unfortunately, Maxime Bavlasov tested positive uh, on a PCR test for COVID. Due to that positive uh, COVID test, uh, the fight is uh, canceled. Worst possible outcome, I get it. Yeah. Especially to make it here, you know, do all the work, do everything, and then get nothing, no right reward. Until the day. I mean, obviously the procedures are in place to protect everybody. And, you know, I know it's unlikely, but I know you wouldn't want to contract the, uh, the, the disease by fighting him. At but. this point. At this point, <laughs> at this point he would. Is he going to take another test or no? Been the whole, no, the test. other, the PCR is, uh, yeah. that's it. So, he can take as many tests as he wants. It's, it's, the commission decision is fine. So it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's done. It's done. Damn. Yeah, it was going to be yeah, a statement. This is huge, man. Like, everything's finally getting out there and we're going and this. <laughs> this is, I can't believe this. This was going to be like the statement. This was bigger than Bernard Hallock and Bernard Hopkins out. This kid was going out within four rounds. It's been a long, long journey. It's been 11 years. Well, you can watch the rest of that on your own time. Shit is heartbreaking, though, right? Especially since you find out that he was getting married in a couple of weeks. It's just or a couple of months, whenever it was. Uh, and, you know, it's a commission thing. You fail a COVID test, you know, you can't fight for whatever reason. And that goes to show you, like, how it's affecting every, like, even if it's not killing you, you know, it's affecting so many in so many different other, what's the word, right way to put it, adverse ways. You know, like how both fighters now lose paydays. Yeah, you know, they may get a little bit of help or whatever, but yo, and then primetime TV access for a fight that it was a lot of, it was put this way for hardcores. There was buzz building around it. You know, when it's on ESPN, you dig? So anyway, let's get to the way in for the fight that is left, which was formerly the co-feature Richard Comey, let me pull this shit up, versus Jackson Mirinez. Now, you may remember Jackson Mirinez from getting a bad decision from that Roley guy, Roley Romero, on one. It wasn't Showbox, was it? Was it Showtime Championship? Yes, it was. It was a world title fight on the line. Well, anyway, let's go back. Really, really bad decision. It was on the undercard of David Benavidez versus um, um, Romero Alexis Angulo. Other Wileen versus Travis Kaufman. I covered all three of those fights, by the way. So let's go watch the way in. Box. Also, who's on the card? Wait, wait, let me slow down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. We already been here 19 minutes. Let me slow down. We still got to do the Jojo Diaz um, uh, way in, you know? So let me slow down a little bit. Let's talk about the card first. What's left of the card? We're all over the place here. Five o'clock in the morning, man. Give me a break. Well, actually, I'm always up this early. So what I'm doing is I'm flipping my my uh, sleep schedule. I want to sleep in the day and be like up at like night for the most part. So what's left of the card is here. Let's go talk about it. Top rank on regular ESPN. 
The undercard, from my understanding, they changed it to about 8.30 p.m. In fact, let me just let Mark Chinook tell you shit. So here's what's left of the card. Richard Comey versus Jackson Marinez. I'm going to be doing a video on that fight. Adam Lopez versus Jason Sanchez. Um, I'm not adding him to my rotation yet. I already talked about how I do my rotation in the last video I did. Jared Anderson versus Kingsley eBay. Uh, I want to do Jared Anderson, but how it works is short version. Once I cover a fighter, once I continue to cover them. So which means he's still like a prospect. And it's like, I'm going to have to, he's going to be fighting like every two months. So I'm not ready to add him to the rotation yet. But let's let Mark Chinook tell you the particulars. I'm Teach Street Controversy with fightv 360com Please subscribe. We cover every single major fight live. We're back. Well, we used to, you know, but we're back. We're back full time again. Trust me. Believe in me. Boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. It's 2021. Boxing is back. Love is in the air. It's Valentine's Day weekend. And let's get them weighed in. It all goes down Saturday, February 13th here inside MGM Grand. 515 Pacific on ESPN Plus. And then at 7 o'clock. So that's 815 Eastern. So I'm, I don't mean, you know, the dumbing down for you guys. Now, was that the undercard? Oh, Lord. I'm going to put all this stuff in the description box. Clock. We move over to the network ESPN. Let's get these under on ESPN Plus. And then at 7 o'clock, we move over to the network ESPN. Let's get these undercards. Wait in, please. So that's 10 p.m. This card is starting on regular ESPN on ESPN Plus. 8.15. Right? Did he see if I'm... Oh, fuck, fuck it. Fuck it. Man, this is too early. Shit. This is the new pot. All right, let's get back to this. Please welcome to the stage from Hanford, California. For the night. Oh, no. We're not watching all of this. No, we're just watching. Y'all want to see Big Baby Anderson? All right, fuck it. We can at least do that. We can at least, we can at least do that. Toledo, Ohio. Jarrett. The real big baby, Anderson, and his opponent from Phoenix, Arizona, Kingsley, the Black Lion, eBay. First on the scale, the real big baby, Anderson. Damn, yeah, man, I didn't want this video to be no half hour long. Shit, man. I was going for like 21 minutes, 25. We still got a whole two weigh-ins to do after this. Three. 249, 249 for Jarrett, the real big baby Anderson. 249, his opponent from Phoenix, Arizona, Kingsley, the Black Lion, eBay. So this guy's gonna be kind of good. Is this like one of them, like must see prospect matchups? How old is Kingsley eBay, 27? 276, 276 big for eBay. Six rounds in the heavyweight division. Jared, the real big baby Anderson. Kingsley, Jared the Anderson. black lion eBay. He's some big heavyweights, bro. I still don't. See, I was great cuss. So I'm, I'm slowing down on my cussing. Cause you know my kid's gonna be around and you know sometimes she's gonna be around when i'm doing my videos so i gotta 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 be cool on the cusp but i was gonna say fucking bridge away division man i don't want to see that shit ah we can't do adam lopez i'm sorry adam lopez i'm sorry guys but we gotta go to the main event i'm sorry ah, we gotta move on no disrespect ah, i'm sorry take it away mike chanook it's now time to weigh in our ma know. main event 10 rounds in the lightweight division Please welcome from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, Jackson El Phoenix Marinez, and his opponent from Accra, Ghana, Richard R.C. Comey. First on the scale, Jackson El Phoenix Marinez. You see how I was talking about, like how top rank, like the, at ESPN they use like stock music. 135 and a half, 135.5 for Marinez. And his opponent from Accra, Ghana, Richard R.C. And why he's not fighting Coley. Roley Romero. Apparently, did Roley turn down the fight? Is what he said on the Zoom call a couple days ago. And is he getting more money to fight Richard Comey? 136, 
One, three, six for Comey. And questions need to be answered. But like I said, I'm rusty. Normally, I would be up on Love this is in the air. It's our main event. Ten rounds in the lightweight division. Jackson, El Phoenix, Marinez, so this Richard, is the main event. R.C. Comey. Ten rounds in the lightweight division. This all goes down tomorrow, Saturday, February 13th, here inside MGM Grand, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. The undercards begin at 5.15 Pacific time on ESPN+. Plus, and then we switch over to the network at 7 p.m. on ESPN. As always, this is boxing. This is top rank. We will see you tomorrow night. ESPN. All right, this card's gonna be going to be going to be directly competing with the card that we're about to talk about. Lastly, the JoJo Diaz versus Shark Van Mahakmurov. All right, I'm gonna know how to pronounce his name by the time we get to the fights later on. Trust me, it's my thing, you know. So sometime later on today, I'm gonna be doing some cleaning or cooking. I'm gonna be pronouncing his name over and over and over again. That's how I do the shit. Um. Because, you know, I remember when I first started learning how to say Sergei Derevyanchenko and learning how to spell all those names throughout all the years. After a while, you write them down so much and you type in them so much that you just, you know, you learn. So this is the case with that. So moving on, Marajan Akhmadaliev, shit like that off the top of your head. How the fuck do I know how to spell that? Um, talking about the 135-pound division. It is deep and it is top heavy. Tiafima Lopez, as I always predicted, is going to be fighting George Cambosos. Rumors are, and Bob Barham, not even rumor, Bob Barham, you know, has stated, I forgot on which platform, was it TalkSport or IFL, that he's trying to make Lomachenko versus uh, uh, Masayoshi. Yeah, Masayoshi Nakatani. Ooh. Tank Davis, we don't know what he's doing. Ryan Garcia, looks like going, he's going to be fighting Javier Fortuna. And these are the big players we're talking about at 1 of uh, uh, 35. Devin Haney, Jorge Linares. Where does the winner, winner of Richard Comey versus Miranez go? Possibly Lomachenko? If Lomachenko beats the, the winner of Lomachenko, Nakatani? You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about fights that could possibly be made. Comey versus a Devin Haney. If he Comey versus a Mariners versus a Devin Haney. If Devin Haney beats Fortuna and can't get a Tia Fimo, Lam Cambosos, or Ryan Garcia. So basically, I see the winner of this fight getting a significant ish fight. You got Dennis Baroncheck, who I found out is rumored, or I don't know, I can't confirm, but somebody told me he is very close with Lomachenko, dating Lomachenko's sister or some other shit. So basically, I was wondering, like, would Lomachenko and Baroncheck fight, and if Baroncheck would get in the way? I don't know, I don't want to get too deep into the politics and everything of 135. So we're just, we're just focusing on where does the winner of Comey versus Marinez go? Interesting. You still got a guy like Yvonne Mindy still in the mix. But I, like as I said, I already said who I see the winner of this fight fighting. Maybe a Devin Haney because, you know, Comey's with DeBella. DeBella has worked with the zone and top rank. He's floating between. I don't see it being Tia Fimo. Could possibly be Loma. Cambosos, if he loses. I don't know. It's a lot of options there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one more jump cut, the last jump cut of the video. Gosh darn it, we're going on 45 minutes. Well, it is what it is. At least we got all, you know, in-depth with shit. So, damn, cuss. Um, we're going to move on to the Patrick Teixeira versus Brian Castaño and Shakvadan Akmerov. And I'm going to pronounce it during his last jump cut. Weigh in and talk about how Jojo Diaz missed weight. Please subscribe, take your time out, and like the video on T-Street Controversy at FightView360.com. Ah, we're back. I just got some bad news. Kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. We're going to talk about it.
by the zone scripture this subscription ran out so long story short i've been getting to the zone free because i was beta testing and i stopped beta testing and now i gotta pay for this shit <laughs> money's so tight <laughs> But somehow, somewhere, we got to make it through. Money's so tight. But anyway, this weekend, man, tomorrow on The Zone, that shit really kind of got me hard, man. Shit. Argentina taking on Brazil. We have Brian Castaño from Buenos Aires. His opponent, the defending champion from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Patrick Teixeira. 20 bucks in. That shit's hard to come by, man. T Street, man. Lawyers and shit. So anyway, if Brian Castaño wins, because of his affiliation with Premier Boxing Champions, remember he took Ares Lindy Laura to hell and back? If Brian Castaño wins, it's looking like it's pretty much a definite that he's going to face Dramel Charlo. Undisputed, WBC, WBA, Super, IBF, WBO, Ring. Love it. Pay-per-view, I'm sorry. You know they're going to do it. I'm down for it. Would they do it on free TV? Mm, they probably could. Whether it's Fox or if the rumors are true, they may be going over to CBS or somewhere else. Wherever the hell they were supposed to be going. I don't know. Uh, I'm still behind. Get catching up. If Patrick Teixeira wins, according to my colleague, Golden Boy has been having some type of talks with No Limit Boxing the promoter of Tim Zoo to possibly have, I hope, I hope I'm saying the right promoter, No Limit Boxing, right? Um, having talks with Golden Boy to possibly stage the fight with Patrick Teixeira versus Tim Zoo over in Australia. It would be big money in it. And they can have a crowd in the stadium. You know, now they're having some COVID shit right now because the new strains over there. As of today, 5.37 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, February the 13th, 2021. Tim Zhu is supposed to be fighting Dennis Hogan March the 31st. Tim Zhu has got to get through Dennis Hogan. And I said in the video that me and Big J did is that I don't know, like I, we haven't really, we haven't seen Tim Zhu tested. So all I'm saying is pretty much, you know, laying out the landscape for you. Let's watch the way in. That damn zone. Shit. I'm next. Castano, the next, mandatory challenger, 16 0 and 1 with 12 knockouts. I'm a coupon man. If I can get my coops and get shit for he free, he will be first on the scale. He is the WBO's number one contender. 153.8. Castaño. Argentina, 153.8. His opponent defending his WBO Junior Middleweight Championship. Here is Patrick Teixeira. 31 and 1 for the champ, 22 knockouts. 153.4. 153.4 for the champ. Castaño the favorite. He lost the WBA world title um, from a failure to submit the contract. Both fighters geared up, ready to go, both on weight. As Golden Boy representative Robert Gaspari shows the belt. That is on the line tomorrow night, WBO Junior Middleweight Championship. So this is going to be on the zone. In my opinion, the most significant fight of the weekend, meaning in regards to the implications. Damn it, Again, BetOnline.com, a proud sponsor of Golden Boy Boxing tomorrow night. BetOnline has all the fight odds for the action. Tomorrow evening, be sure to place your wagers. And see what you come up with. Argentina contra Brazil. The two countries familiar with each other in their football version. Tomorrow night it'll be the boxing version of this rivalry. Oh my bad, I thought the mic was off. Fuck's sakes, mate. We're gonna be here 45 minutes. See, motherfucking running my mouth. 
I should have just let the shits play through, right? The I'm champ, Patrick Teixeira, defending against the number one WBO contender, Brian Castaño, tomorrow night, live on zone. So if you want the rest of the details, I already pretty much told you the details. You're going to have to watch the video of me and Big J did that I released before this. Because I'm tired of talking about it. Shit. But we're going to go on to this. Now, this right here is, I'm, I'm hearing this is some shit. Like, bro, how do you get a new contract with a, contra a controversial promotional uh, managerial company, get all this bread, having, you know, let's just say it this way. To not get into too many details, because it's it's a lot of shit going on, Jojo Diaz is involved in a lot of shit. He's got a lot of shit going on in his motherfucking life right now. And for him to miss weight like this so disgracefully, it makes shit worse. Now, I was never really high on Jojo Diaz. However, I did have him beating De Tevin Farmer because he is a, a competent pressure fighter. He's, very, he's a good pressure fighter. Not a great good pressure fighter, but a good boxer with some pop. And, 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 and some punch output, you can keep Jojo Diaz off of you. So, he, was, he had a rematch clause to fight Evan Farmer, but he's fighting his mandatory. I don't know what's going to happen with the belt right now. I'm going to have to go do some research. But it's like, bro, what the fuck were you doing, bro? And then this is not a fight where I've been doing a little bit of research. i got to watch some more tape. But this is a fight where people are saying, oh, shit, Jojo Diaz might lose. So it's like you lose your belt on the scales. You get you lose all this money, $100,000 or so. Because if my if, from my understanding, according to the commission, is that if you're over, if you're more than over 2.2 2 pounds or over 2 pounds over the weight as a missing weight, then they're like, nah, fuck it. Don't try to go some shit. I don't know. I, I, it's just... You know, I got to sharpen up. I'm sorry, I'm sharpening up. I'm sharpening the tools. Sweet, 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 sweet. I'm sharpening the tools. We're getting there. Like, bro, what the fuck were you thinking, bro? Let's play the, let's, let's just watch. As Shopcott makes his way. And then, just watch. Pay attention. See if you, see if you spot. See if you spot it. Up to the stage, we'd also like to recognize the defending IBF. Super featherweight world champion from South El Monte, California, Freddy. Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. Freddie, first chair over here. First on the scale. Nobody's up there. Shavkat Rakhimov. 129.8. 129.8 for the undefeated hard-hitting Russian. 15 and 0, 12 knockouts. By the way, you damn well know Jojo Diaz knew his ass wasn't going to make weight like the day and the day before. And now ready to step up onto the scale. 32 professional bouts, 31 wins, one defeat, 15 wins by way of knockout. A 2012 U.S. Olympian from South El Monte. He is the pride, Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. One thirty-three point six. One thirty-three point six for Diaz. One thirty-three point six. Motherfucker. You motherfucker. 3.6 though? 3.6. 3.6, my man. Bro, 3.6. That's great. While we wait for our official face off one last time before they meet inside the ring, we remind you March 20th, the action with Golden Boy continues as we head out to Texas for a great matchup with undefeated rising welterweight Virgil Ortiz as he will take on the former world champion Maurice Hooker. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com. Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, as now you are looking at tomorrow night's main event, Shavkat Sherdkov Rakhimov. From Eric Hadenberg, Russia, the undefeated slugger, taking on the defending champion, Joseph so Jojo Diaz Jr. of South El Monte, on... California. Look, look, what, look, why, look, he's a, look, he got the crazy psycho eyes at you, 3.6, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, look.
look at him. Like, wow, look, like, it's a lot of bad energy. Look, he pissed. Motherfucker, deep one, motherfucker. Sherdkov Rakhimov from Eric Hatenberg, Russia, the undefeated slugger, taking on the defending champion, Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. of South El Monte, California. This fight just got much more Rakimov said Jojo Diaz has never been hit like what he's going to be hit tomorrow night. Ooh. He said yesterday in an interview. Ooh. Jojo said, bring whatever you've got. You're not taking my belt. We'll oh, see you tomorrow no, night you don't got no on the zone live around the you world from no. here at Fantasy Springs in Indio, California. No, dog. That ain't your belt no more, dog. Okay, I meant okay. 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 Much respect from both up. fighters. Thank you, gentlemen. Congratulations on both. Okay. Okay, I'm interested. I'm high. It's a little early. I'm high. I'm high. They got me. They didn't. They, they didn't. They didn't reel me in. Fifteen and over twelve KOs. Twenty six years old. South Paul from Russia. Rock them all. Shans Vakatan. No. Shavs Kazan Rock them all. Man, I'm gonna get it right. Let's go see what Boxrec has under his all sports, meaning his amateur and pro record. Who he's. It's his first time fighting here in the States. What card was this that he was on over in? What card was this? Ooh. Ooh. We got a question mark around this guy. Let's see if there's anybody of note. Now, obviously, this is not all of them, but this, this is information that they gathered. I don't see any names I know. You see any names you know? I don't. But I don't know. The, the, the crazy eyes is what got me. Yeah, I'm superstitious. Everybody tell you. So to me, you know, I'll tell you like, ooh. You know, that's why they'll say, yo, T-Street, he be having good boxing knowledge, man. But don't be listening to his predictions, man. Just get the boxing knowledge. That nigga be saying crazy shit. So I'll be like, ooh, just because he gave him the crazy eyes, he's going to win now. <laughs> Even though I be knowing better. Like, that's how I be thinking. At tomorrow night's main event, Shavka. Sometimes it just be all in the eyes. Sherdkov Rakhimov from Eric Hatenberg, Russia, the undefeated slugger, taking on the defending champion, Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. of South El Monte, California. And watch, Jojo going to turn away first. Rakhimov said Jojo Diaz has never been hit like what Ooh. he's going to be hit tomorrow night. He said yesterday in an interview. Yeah, you ain't make weights. Wait till Jojo you said, bring whatever you've got. You're not taking my belt. We'll see tomorrow night. On the zone live that around the gone, world baby. from here at Fantasy Spring. That belt is gone. All right, so listen, I'm about to go make some breakfast, go walk the dog. Um, we're going to be back with a stream to talk about all this. We didn't want to talk about it. We just did 45 minutes. What else did we talk about? Maybe I'll do some other videos, some other stuff. Um, um, T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. So we will be back doing live post fight commentary for the. Um, I don't know if I'm going to cover the Zelfa Barrett Kinko Martinez fight, but it's definitely Josh Warren to Mauricio Herrera. I'm going to have a post fight live video with highlights after. Um, I'm going to be here for the Shane Mosley fight, the Bach Ram. Basically, I'm covering four fights on this Diaz Rachmanov fight, Rachmanov fight, and just on the top rank card, the Richard Comey fight. And then I just don't want to, like, UFC, man, ain't yo. So, you know, they had the Conor McGregor pay-per-view like two weeks ago, right? They got this pay-per-view tonight, and they got two in March. Them things are $74.19 apiece, baby. After tax, it's $74.19. And money's been tight, but we're going to do it, man. That's why my black ass got to do videos. Now, yeah, I get to get that money back, tax write-offs and all that type of shit like that. But however, my gosh, you got to have that money on hand. I mean, I do, but I'm not a cheapskate. But... This shit gotta be paid. Legal fees, man. I'm out of here. We'll be back. I got I'm starting to die profit. Fathers against abuse. There's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of shit going on. So I guess this is, you know, how they say you gotta spend money to make money is that thing. I'm T Street Controversy. I already told you my schedule for the day. So I'm gonna be here. You're gonna be seeing a lot of me in the next 24 hours. And by the end of the night, I'm probably gonna be a little wired and sleep deprived. I'm T Street Controversy with fightview360.com. Please subscribe.